Well, hello, Holy Trinity, and welcome to this uh, next devotion. It's a great joy to share with you very briefly over the next few minutes. And I want to uh, read a gem of a verse from the Old Testament to base a few thoughts out of for us as an encouragement. And it's from 1 Chronicles 12.32, and it reads like this. And from Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. Context of that verse is of the list of the 12 tribes of Israel and men that volunteered themselves from each one of those tribes to be part of King David's army when there was a civil war going on. And it lists in that uh, description various strengths that each one of those tribes brought to the army. Uh, and it might be the equivalent today of speaking about different nations in very broad brushstrokes as to what strengths those peoples bring. So, for example, the Italians who bring passion, the Germans who bring efficiency, the English who bring decorum, and the Swedes who bring brilliant furniture building ability. Um, they are broad rushstrokes that describe the peoples in those places. And for the men of Issachar, a relatively unknown tribe in the Bible and in Jewish history, it speaks of a key strength that they brought to the table, that they were men who understood the times and then, then knew how Israel should act as a result. And I want to say today that I think this is key for us out of all the things that we could long for that mark us as the people of God, that actually understanding the times and knowing how to act as a result is key and really important for us. Let me just open up those two ideas. Firstly, that we're those that need to understand the times. We are praying that the government uh, understand the times at the moment, that they have a full sense of all that's going on and how to make decisions and implement policies as a result. For ourselves, we need to understand the times to be self-aware of ourselves, of how we act and react in this time, and how we can best support others in this time. But I think ultimately this speaks about understanding this time from the perspective of God, from the perspective of his kingdom and what he intends for it. That we know that God has not been taken by surprise, as we've often been saying, but that he has ordained plans and purposes for this season in his own hand and that he is sovereign and Lord over it all. And so we're to be those who understand those times. I'm reminded here of Paul in Athens in Acts 17. And you'll know the story really well of how he's been in Athens and he's been wandering around the temples and seeing various idols being worshipped. And getting incensed, he starts proclaiming the gospel, the true message of salvation from a God that should be worshipped. And people hearing this get um, understandably confused. Who is this Jesus that Paul is proclaiming? He's proclaiming something about the resurrection from the dead. And they drag him up to Mars Hill, the Areopagus, where there's a debating uh, arena. And there Paul gets to present the gospel. And he does so by speaking about all the different religious uh, rituals that were going on in Athens at the time. He says, you guys must be really religious. You've got all these altars that you worship at. But while I was walking around those altars, I noticed an altar that was inscribed, an altar to the unknown God. And I want to say to you, that person, that unknown God who you didn't know, I'm now proclaiming to you. This is who Jesus is. He's the unknown God. And Paul knew their history. He knew the times and seasons that they had experienced in the past. He knew that that altar was constructed after a huge plague had hit Athens many centuries earlier and that the Athenians had prayed to just about every other god that they can think about, including their own, and nothing happened. The plague wasn't averted. But then they suddenly came to the realisation, the wise men among them, that they needed to pray to the god that they didn't know, the one true god, the god beyond all other gods, the one who they didn't know the name of. And so they prayed to an unknown God who was the ultimate one above all the gods they'd been worshipping. And as they did that, miraculously, the plague stopped. And to honour that God, uh, they created that altar to an unknown God. And Paul is saying that person 
who you prayed to, that God, that unknown God, well, that is the person I'm talking about, it's Jesus. And fascinatingly, as he goes on to speak about Jesus and who God is, he says that God had put witnesses in your history in the times and seasons to point to himself. And he says this in Acts 17, that God marked out appointed times in your history and the boundaries of your lands. God did this so that they, that is you guys, would seek him. That he has appointed times, especially for the purposes for people to seek him. And I think we're in such a time right now that he's appointed this time in his sovereignty so that people would seek him. So that people would call upon him and be saved, call upon his name. That this is a unique time where God is stirring many who don't know him to cry out to him those who are stripped of normal ways of coping, those who are sadly in that moment of tragedy or currently going through suffering, those who would normally never think to pray to God, who in this season God is especially intending for them to cry out to him, just like those ancient Athenians did, that they might be saved and that as a result they might know him. And we're to be people. God's people who understands that aspect of this time, that these are the times that God has appointed. And then, just like the men of Essica, not only are we to understand those times and just keep it to ourselves as a secret, but then to act differently, that they knew how Israel should act as a result, it says. And so how should we be acting as a result? Uh, well, I, I think, first and foremost, we're to pray into that purpose of God in this season, that people would seek him, that they would cry out to him, that they would encounter him, that on a national level, there would be a turning to Jesus in this season. It's a unique season where God alone can do it and God will do it. And then we're to join in with that in people's lives, joining up, connecting the dots in those whom we know and love, saying that this person is right at the door, knocking on the door of your heart, and that he's the one that is seeking to encounter you in this season. We're to understand the times and the seasons and the way to walk as a result. And can I encourage you today that uh, to seek God for that personally, an understanding of the times from his perspective for you and the, play, the part that you play in that as a result. Well, thanks uh, very much for listening. I hope this has been a help for you.